Hey guys, this is my ozone machine inside. And this is its main component, a quartz tube in which a corona discharge occurs. About 10% of the oxygen that enters one end of the tube turns into ozone and comes out the other end. Right now the ozone generator is off and I've passed oxygen through it, condensing it in a test tube. You can see the pale blue color of liquid oxygen. Now I'll turn on the ozone generator and you'll notice how the liquid oxygen's color becomes more intense. This happens because ozone dissolves in liquid oxygen. To enhance this effect, we need stronger cooling. For this purpose, I'll use a liquid nitrogen sprayer. Liquid nitrogen cooling prevents the oxygen from boiling and increases the amount of dissolved ozone, making the solution a deeper blue. Pure liquid ozone has a color closer to violet. If I cool a glass tube through which I pass azonated oxygen, violet droplets of liquid ozone will start to form. Liquid ozone is highly unstable and can explode from impact. Watch what happens when I gently tap this glass tube on the lab table. Here you can see how ozone dissolves in liquid oxygen, creating a vibrant blue color. Ozonated oxygen is relatively safe to handle, but as I mentioned earlier, can explode upon impact, especially in the presence of organic materials, like wood. Now I'll pour ozonated oxygen onto a piece of wood and hit it with a hammer. Cotton wool soaked in turpentine also ignites upon contact with ozonated oxygen. In slow motion, you can see ignition occurring even before direct contact with a liquid surface. To obtain pure ozone without complex equipment, you can simply pour ozonated oxygen into a Dewar tube and wait a minute. Dewar test tube, it's a double-walled test tube with a vacuum in between, it's a kind of thermos. As the oxygen gradually evaporates, only pure ozone remains. Now pure liquid ozone remains in the test tube and look, the test tube becomes pale blue, because gaseous ozone is a pale blue gas. To highlight the ozone's color, I used fast forward and rewind effects. When liquid ozone is left undisturbed, it remains stable. However, if it reacts with any easy oxidizable substance, it detonates. 
In this experiment, I'll introduce nitrogen monoxide into the Dewar test tube. You might know that colorless nitrogen monoxide oxidizes rapidly in air to form reddish-brown nitrogen dioxide. It reacts even more readily with ozone. So, we have some pure liquid ozone concentrated in the test tube. And now I'll begin to supply nitrogen monoxide. Before moving to more explosive reactions, let's look at a few safer ones. First, the classic reaction with potassium iodide solution. Elzen oxidizes iodide ions into elemental iodine, which darkens the solution. Note that as oxygen evaporates and the elzen concentration increases, the amount of iodine released also increases. At the end of the reaction, when only highly concentrated ozone remains, the iodine release peaks, causing the solution to darken sharply. Here is a slow motion of iodine formation. A similar oxidation occurs with iron ions, changing their oxidation state from 2 plus to 3 plus visible for a color shift. A related reaction happens in acidic manganese sulfate solutions, where colorless manganese ions oxidize to red-violet permanganate ions. In a natural solution, the same reaction produces a precipitate of manganese dioxide. When azanated oxygen is added to silver nitrate solution, black tetracylor tetroxide precipitates. At room temperature, gaseous ozone can oxidize most metals. Let's explore some of the most interesting reactions. In this small flask, I have a bit of mercury, which doesn't wet glass. Let's see what happens when I expose mercury to ozone. Mercury has high surface tension, so it usually forms droplets instead of spreading. But after shaking the flask, the mercury wets the glass, forming a mercury mirror. Why do you think this happens? Let us know in the comments. This mercury mirror can be easily dissolved using nitric acid or aqua regia. If silver is exposed to gaseous ozone, it rapidly turns brown-black due to the formation of silver oxide and tetrasilver tetroxide. Here is a shiny piece of thallium, which reacts uniquely with ozone. I'll place it in a glass tube and pass azonated oxygen through it. Upon contact, thallium changes color, first to light brown, then to blue. This is due to both the formation of thallium oxides and light refraction through the oxide film.
for the reaction of anhydrous hydrazine and liquid ozone, I cooled the watch glass with liquid nitrogen, so that the needed oxygen would not evaporate quickly. Once only a violet drop remains, I'll add a single drop of hydrazine. Fun fact, during this experiment, I went through more gloves than ever before. Ozone quickly degrades materials like latex, nitrile and isoprene. Thanks for watching, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what other ozone reactions you'd like to see. I read all of them. And of course, a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters, both long time and new. Your support makes these unique chemical experiments possible. Without your support, these experiments would remain just ideas on paper. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.